Hi everyone, I'm Polkit Kandalpal from the University of Pennsylvania and I'm going to talk about our work on postmortem human brain at 7 Tesla MRI to study sexual pathology associations in Alzheimer's and related dementias. Comorbidity of ADRD and conventional in vivo biomarkers make it difficult for clinicians to determine to what extent cognitive decline in individual patients is driven by AD versus other factors. And therefore, in vivo biomarkers are unable to reliably detect non-AD pathologies from normal aging. Therefore, there is a need to identify and obtain structural measurements from AD-specific regions and therefore derive in vivo biomarkers that can detect and quantify mixed pathology so that treatments can be prioritized for those most likely to benefit from them. Therefore, we believe that a joint analysis of ex vivo MRI and histopathology will help link regional changes in brain morphometry with underlying pathological processes in ADRD. And therefore, help validate in vivo biomarkers that consider pathologic heterogeneity in clinical trials. Postmortem MRI allows imaging at much greater resolution and help in study the structure pathology associations with greater granularity than in vivo MRI by linking cytoarchitecture with pathology. Here at Penn, during the autopsy of a specimen, one hemisphere was fixed in formalin and then was imaged using 7 Tesla MRI. The non-imaged hemisphere of each brain, that is the contralateral tissue, underwent histological processing for neuropathological examination. Over the past few years, we have collected a data set of around 150 postmortem brain tissues from donors with diseases of primary diagnosis and secondary diagnosis spanning Lewy body dementia, late frontotemporal lobar degeneration, cerebrovascular disease, uh, amongst many others. And in particular, we obtained three different MRI sequences for each brain specimen. Uh, namely, a T2-weighted uh, scan at 300 microns, a KISS scan at 500 microns, and a T2-star FAST scan at 160 microns. Furthermore, for quantitative analysis, we grouped 82 out of these 150 specimens in the AD continuum by excluding cases with diagnosis of frontotemporal lobar degeneration or non-AD tauopathy. Now, to analyze these complex data sets, we need to develop computational tools for image segmentation, parcellation, and registration. But development of algorithms and open source tools for ex vivo image analysis has been limited primarily due to the following factors. Uh, ex vivo images have greater heterogeneity in scanning protocols than in vivo MRI. They have greater textual complexity. Uh, they often present with large collapsed ventricles uh, due to severe neurodegeneration. There are many uh, issues such as flattened edges associated with fixation. Uh, also, there are just many imaging artifacts such as uh, the anterior and posterior signal dropout uh, in some of our sequences. Moreover, there are these sampling cuts uh, which are used for further histopathological examination. And we want to make sure that whatever algorithm that we develop uh, takes care of these sampling cuts as well. Uh, and lastly, uh, there is limited development also due to just limited availability of specimens, imaging data, or tools for whole hemisphere disease population. Therefore, in this study, our goal is to develop whole hemisphere parcellation methods based on numerous atlases, just like is done for in vivo MRI. Then we would validate the methods using structure pathology associations based on histopathology, which would enable us to do pointwise analysis uh, like in vivo imaging to understand the underlying pathological processes which affect neurodegeneration within the AD spectrum. So by combining deep learning with classical methods for topology correction and surface-based modeling, our new pipeline for ex vivo MRI allows us to parcelate the brain at some millimeter native subject space resolution, unlike free server, uh, which is not uh, most commonly used, which is most commonly used in brain image analysis. So first, we train and benchmark uh, a lot of different uh, neural networks with post hoc topology correction step to obtain automated volumetric segmentations of subcortical structures, namely caudate, putamen, thalamus, globus pallidus. Uh, and then we also segmented the cortical gray matter, white matter lesions, and the normal appearing white matter. So once we have these segmentations, we then developed a surface modeling pipeline to get whole hemisphere 
plane parcellations. Briefly, uh, using the volumetric segmentations as discussed before, uh, we take the white matter surface, tessellate it, and correct for any topological defects. Uh, this white matter surface is then inflated and projected into a spherical space. This projected sphere is then registered to an external spherical atlas based on the local curvature pattern. Then the spherical transformation and the deep learning based volumetric segmentations are used to obtain the PL and the white matter surfaces. Once we have the PL and the white matter surfaces, we can parcelate them into different uh, anatomical regions by using any of the standard atlases, such as the DK at DKT atlas. Shown here are the three planes of XV weighted MRI with the corresponding DKT volumetric segmentations and surface-based parcellations on PL and inflated surfaces for the medial and the lateral views in native subject space uh, resolution for T2 weighted MRI. Here is another example. We also compared our method with two other existing uh, recent methods, and we show that our method outperforms these methods. Moreover, we provide parcellations not only in DKT Atlas, but any uh, given atlases out there in the world. Uh, shown here are three other atlases for which we provide parcellations, namely Schaefer, Glasser, and Von Economo Koskinas atlases. Next, we validated the parcellation method using association studies via histopathology, uh, which would then enable us to understand the underlying pathological processes. To do this, we identify 16 cortical regions, such as the anterior cortex, the Broadman area 35, that are implicated in ADRD. These landmarks were obtained to guide histological sampling in our other ongoing projects. In these regions, we obtain semi-quantitative ratings of tau, TDP43, amyloid beta, alpha synuclein, as well as neuronal loss. And we assigned uh, a rating of 0 to 3, going from rare, mild, moderate to severe. Additionally, we also obtained ratings of PAL score, Bragg stage, and CDA score for each of the specimens. Then to quantitatively evaluate the performance of the deep learning based segmentation uh, for whole hemisphere cortical gray matter segmentation, we developed a protocol to measure localized thickness. Basically in each hemisphere, the cortical thickness at the 16 landmark locations were computed using the segmentation of the surrounding cortical ribbon with the maximal sphere inscribed at the landmark whose diameter gives local thickness. For a quantitative analysis, we use the AD2 subjects in the AD continuum. We computed the Spearman correlation between mean regional thickness and neuropathological ratings in native subject space resolution across all the subjects. In dark purple, we observed significant negative correlations with global ratings of amyloid beta, Bragg staging, CRAD, and semiconductive ratings of tau pathology and neuronal loss. In particular, significant correlation were obtained in the anterior, parahippocampal, medial orbitofrontal, temporal pole inferior temporal and parietal lobes, regions implicated in Alzheimer's and related dementias. Next, we warp the surface-based parcellations and thickness maps from native subject space resolution to the FS average template space to enable group-wise and vertex-wise analysis, a first of its kind in ex vivo imaging. Basically, we performed vertex-wise analysis to fit a generalized linear model. Shown here are the T statistic maps of the correlation between the cortical thickness with neuropathology, with age, sex, and postmortem interval as covariates across all the subjects in the AD continuum. The clusters outlined in black indicate regions where we observe significant correlation. We observe that the strongest correlations were observed in the medial temporal lobe, the region first associated with Alzheimer's. Lastly, we highlight some studies which are possible. Uh, due to the developed parcellation scheme in postmodern imaging. In terms of other segmented structures, Alzheimer's is not only implicated in cortical gray matter, but have also shown manifestations in other subcortical area. Here, the subcortical volume was able to differentiate between different diagnostic groups. Separately, the white matter regions are common findings in aging, and the extent to which they are related to cerebral vascular disease versus AD is not well understood. And therefore, segmenting the white matter lesions in postmortem imaging allows us to study them in new ways. White matter hemper intensity volume could also serve as cerebrovascular disease pathology biomarkers. 
We are also looking at ways to quantitatively analyze the laminar profile of the cortical gray matter to measure how different pathologies affect different cortical layers and potentially use this as a diagnostic biomarker and thus be able to distinguish between different groups of diseases. We are also looking at ways to uh, register ex vivo to in ex vivo T2 weighted uh, MRI to in vivo T1 weighted MRI uh, using deep learning. And shown here is an example of the registered hemisphere of an ex vivo T2 weighted image and the corresponding in vivo T1 weighted antimortem MRI. Lastly, I would like to thank all the participants in the imaging studies, uh, all the donors, my thesis committee, my lab members, and all the centers uh, at Penn involved in this work. Thank you.